Hello, in that uh, last uh, lecture, we talked a little bit about how we can compute gradients in PyTorch. Um, I'm going to start working towards showing how that's actually an extremely useful um, tool for optimization. And, uh, and we're going to be talking about how optimization applies to data science, and in particular, this algorithm called uh, the gradient descent algorithm. Um, so what is optimization? Uh, when we're talking about optimization, we're almost always trying to either minimize or maximize something. And, um, and so, for example, maybe I have some function f where uh, y equals f of x. And maybe uh, the minimization problem is that I want to find whatever x gives me back the smallest y value. Um, those of you who have taken calculus or have seen lots of problems like this, where you're trying to minimize something, an example of an optimization problem. Um, other cases, right, that might kind of get us closer to data science, is that maybe we want to find a fit line. And um, if I'm drawing a fit line on top of a scatter plot, that fit line has some coefficients uh, with it. And those co coefficients are, well, what is a slope? What do I multiply by x? Um, and then the intercept, we can also think of that as a coefficient um, that's multiplied by the constant 1. And, um, and what we generally want to do is we want to minimize something to find the, the best slope and intercept for that fit line. And, uh, and what we're minimizing is the average um, square of the differences between um, our scatter points and that line. So another optimization problem, we're minimizing uh, this kind of error to get the best coefficients. Um, we aren't really going to do uh, deep learning or neural, which kind of works with neural nets in this course. Uh, but these same techniques that we use for regression and finding the best coefficients uh, show up again in, uh, in kind of deep learning. And um, in particular, when you're doing deep learning, uh, there are all these kind of neurons uh, that are connected to each other via edges, and there's weights on those edges. And um, what people will do is they'll say, well, how many mistakes is this neural network making? And, um, and can we really find the weights on those edges to minimize the, the mistakes we're making in terms of either how many they are or how bad the mistakes are? Right? So very similar uh, techniques will be used, even though we won't go there in CS320. Um, so I'm just looking at that first case, right? So here are the three different problems I've talked about. Looking at that first one, finding the x that minimizes uh, the y, um, how can we do that? Um, those of you who have taken calculus probably know that, well, we take the derivative of the function f, at least if f is some sort of continuous function, uh, then we set that derivative to zero, um, and then uh, all the places where, uh, where uh, y is zero, or I'm sorry, where the derivative of zero, we can see what the x's are and we can check those. And, and each of those will either be a, a minimum or a maximum, right? So it's okay if you aren't familiar with that, but that's what you would do in calculus. Um, if we're interested in doing this computationally, uh, we could brute force it. And, and by brute force, I mean we kind of just like naively try lots of different values. Right? Maybe I try negative 5, negative 4.9, negative 4.8. Um, if the minimum is, is kind of between negative 5 and 5, I'm probably going to get pretty close there. Might might not be perfect, but I can have a pretty good um, approximation. Uh, what we're going to be talking about soon is gradient descent, which takes uh, some ideas from both of these. Um, instead of just kind of naively trying every x value, uh, we'll start with one specific x value, maybe randomly chosen, and, um, and then what we'll do is we'll keep tweaking it. And by tweaking it, I mean we might increase it a little bit, decrease it a little bit, and we're going to keep doing that and search for the best. And, and rather than just kind of naively trying a bunch of different x values, um, we'll use this idea of a gradient from uh, calculus to tell us, hey, if I'm trying to tweak x, uh, will increasing it uh, make things better, or will decreasing it uh, make things better? I guess that's the gradient descent. And, um, and the picture you should have, kind of the mental picture for gradient descent, is that you're a person um, hiking in the mountains. So I've drawn some mountains here, and um, kind of it's very just two-dimensional, right? I have one dimensional, which is the x, and then the y, and descent means we're going down, right? So we're trying to find the lowest place in the Mountains, right? So I'm trying to solve that first problem. How can I find the x that minimizes uh, the y? And, um, and here we can pretty much see where that is, right? That's that lowest point. Um, but the trick here is that when we're doing gradient descent, uh, there's uh, some sort of heavy fog, right? We can't see the whole mountain range. All we know is what x position we're currently at and what the slope is under our feet, right? So if I'm this person standing here and uh, there's this slope or gradient underneath me, um, I should ask myself, does it make sense if I'm trying to 
get to the lowest altitude possible, the lowest y value, uh, should I move to the left or to the right? And, um, and so I see the gradient is positive, right? Bigger x means bigger y. And, uh, and because of that, since I want a smaller y, uh, I want to move in the opposite direction, right? I have a positive gradient. So I want to move left, right? It's because smaller x is trying to give me smaller y. So if I do that, maybe I jump over here. Um, I, I see that I still have a positive gradient, so I might want to move left farther, um, and so on and so forth, as I'll kind of get closer and closer to that uh, minimum. Now, now here's where the analogy breaks down a little bit. Um, when you're hiking, in reality, uh, you can't get between two points without crossing all the points in between. Uh, that's not true for gradient descent. And gradient descent, instead of walking, you, you do something more like jumping, right? So you can jump from one place to another. And really, you can jump as, uh, as kind of far as you like in the algorithm, right? And so this is going to raise a problem that you don't really have in hiking, which is maybe you jump too far in one iteration. Maybe you jump past uh, the local minimum, right? So that's not good. So we're going to kind of, um, when we're actually writing code for this later, we're going to be careful that we don't uh, kind of jump too far at once. The other problem, which maybe you've also seen from calculus, is that, well, there's all these local minimum in different uh, minima in different places, right? How do I know um, I'm finding the best one? I've drawn some of them here. There's more that I haven't even labeled. And, um, and so that's a concern for certain problems. Um, it doesn't happen for all problems. There's um, some problems where the shape of the mountains is is what we say convex, and, and there's kind of only one uh, one local minima, and that local minimum also happens to be the global minimum. Um, the hiking analogy can also break down because we can have lots of dimensions. Um, I've been kind of just showing one x. It, it still makes sense if there's two x's, right? That kind of uh, analogy to hiking maybe even makes more sense, right? Because I'm kind of um, there's kind of two different uh, uh, axes along which I could move, right? So maybe that makes sense. I have these three-dimensional mountains. Um, but what about if I have 100 dimensions, right? That happens all the time when we're dealing with real data. And it's not clear uh, what picture we should be, what we should be drawing then. Okay, let's uh, talk a little bit about the second problem um, before we actually write some code. Um, so instead of just trying to find the y that, or finding the minimum y, by finding the right x values. Um, what if I'm trying to fit a line to a scatter plot and I'm trying to look for the coefficients? I have my slope and my intercept. Um, in that case, right, I have some sort of function where y equals f of x. And, um, and how does that work? Well, f of x equals the slope times x and the intercept. And, uh, and that's not the function I'm trying to minimize. I'm not, I don't care about minimizing uh, f. What I actually want to do is I want to minimize a different function that's based on um, f, and that function is a mean squared error. Um, it turns out if I have a scatter point uh, with some data, um, I can feed in two values, slope and intercept. And based on those, I may get some mean squared error uh, relative to the data, right? So kind of my inputs are slope and intercept, my output is an error. And, and that's what I want to do the gradient descent on, on this mean squared error function. I don't want to do gradient descent on f, right? So what we'll try to do is we'll do gradient descent on these two values, these slope and intercept, to find uh, to find the best values to try to minimize that that error. And it turns out that the mean squared error uh, is one of these nice functions that that we can call convex. And what that means is there's just kind of this one uh, uh, local minima, and everything kind of nicely slopes towards it, right? So this is going to be a perfect case for for gradient descent. Um, and, uh, and we're going to do this to kind of solve the least squared errors problem. Uh, there's multiple ways to do it. There's ways to directly compute slope and intercept that give you the least uh, that give you the least um, squared error. Uh, but it turns out when you have highly high, high a high number of dimensions, right, that often or lots of data, um, often the gradient descent approach is going to be more computationally efficient than kind of directly computing uh, the answer. Directly computing it is what we call a closed form. A solution in contrast to this gradient descent approach that I'm going to be walking you through in, in upcoming videos.